Hey guys, welcome back. So this is going to be my 36th week, 36 weeks of pregnancy bump date. I have a lot to say again, and I am finally catching up on these. Um, so I'm posting this. This is my 36 weeks update. I am 36 weeks and three days when I'm filming. This will go up a little bit closer to when I'm 37 weeks by the time I get it edited. But um, there have been some major changes, so stay tuned. Um, I did want to mention that I posted the name reveal and nursery tour. Um, so we're doing a light gray with baby pink and uh, elephants for the baby's nursery and her name is going to be Daisy Elizabeth. Um, in case you, m you missed that video, it's going to be linked down below. Um, we did have our maternity photos taken. That was on April 2nd. I've posted those on Facebook, but uh, I'll go ahead and insert a few here. Alright, so during the 36th week, the day I turned 36 weeks, I did have a doctor's appointment. And uh, the first thing we did, normal vitals, blood pressure's good, everything's fine. Um, I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> so between my 34-week appointment and my 36-week appointment, which is my last time where I'd have a two-week gap, um, my weight went up by four pounds in two weeks, which is like crazy because I had only gained like, I don't know, 17 pounds in like 30, 34 weeks. And then all of a sudden in two weeks, I gained four. So, um, they didn't even mention it at the appointment, like nobody like scolded me or said anything, so I'm like, okay, I guess I'm fine, but I feel like odd about that. So that pushed me over the 20 pound mark, so I have at this 37 weeks-ish when you're watching 36 weeks, I've definitely gained 20 pounds, maybe like 22, um, depending on how this next week goes, so I'm kind of being more conscious of what I'm eating. I know that it wasn't all me. Like, of course, the baby's gaining about half a pound a week right now. So those two weeks, she should have gained one pound. But what did the other three? What, how did that happen? <laughs> like, I don't know. So, um, I mean, Easter, and there was candy, and I was having desserts, but I don't think it was that bad. So um, a lot of it could be swelling, and um, I know my boobs are a lot more sore right now, so I think they're growing again. They're getting that colostrum ready for the baby coming. I'm just having a lot of fluid retention, perhaps. So Maybe that's a little bit more of the weight, but I think at least two of those four pounds is just straight up like fat reserves um, for breastfeeding or whatever. So my body is just hanging on to everything, wants me to make sure I have enough for it. Trust me, I got enough. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. So am I swollen? Heck yes. Again, I'm not wearing my ring. Um, my fingers still hurt. I've been going to physical therapy three times a week, doing my exercises twice a day, icing, heating. Um, trying different things from the physical therapist. The neck stuff does tend to work. When I go to the appointments, I feel better. When I go two days without an appointment, I feel worse. So I know it's working. I'm gonna keep going up until delivery. Um, and then after delivery, I may keep going. Um, I'll take a break right when I have a baby. So I'm not taking the baby to physical therapy with me. But if I feel like it's helping or I miss it, I'll go back. I'm hoping though, that, and the doctor or the physical therapist thinks that it will get better. So I'm hoping I won't need to go after I have the baby. But I may have to go here and there. We'll see. Um, but yeah, the hands still keep me awake. And now they're like, fingers lock up. So like, I, I'll be like, oh, and I have to like help. I can't make fists in the morning. Um, my hands are really sore, almost like I have like arthritis or something. Um, it's just very strange. I've never had anything like that. Like in the morning when I'm holding my phone, I'll be like this. And uh, I can't swipe with my right finger because every time I make this, mo this thumb motion, like it wants to lock up. It's really weird. And then during the day, it gets, it's fine. It still hurts, but it's totally doable. Okay, so at that doctor's appointment, sorry, blood pressure was good. Um, they did check my cervix to see if I was dilated. And um, basically she said I'm not. She said like the opening of my cervix, like she could feel like it was open, but the inside where it counts is still closed. Um, also, they did the swab for strep B. I don't have those results yet. Um, and she said when she was down there, she could feel the baby's foot. So they also did the um, Doppler, the fetal Doppler, to hear the baby's heartbeat. And it is high up on my belly. It was about, I think it was 140 or 142 or something like that. Her heart rate was just fine. Um, but guys, she's still breech. Um, here I am at 36, 37 weeks. She is still breech. And not only is she breech, she is footling breech, which means she has head up, foot down. But rather than her head, her like legs being up, you know, curled up, 
one foot is down. And so that's like the worst position for an external version. It's the hardest position to deliver. Like if you were going to try to deliver a breech baby vaginally, that's the hardest kind. You know, you could probably risk like dislocating the baby's legs. You could risk like hoarding their hips, hurting you. There's a, a bigger chance that you'll lose the baby during delivery. Um, so footling breech, you don't mess around. With that said, we talked about external version. That's the external cephalic version where they push on my stomach and try to do a procedure to get the baby to flip by pressing on my stomach. So I asked, is that still an option? Because I still would like to consider the vaginal delivery. And the doctor was like, you have a lot of things stacked up against you in that department. So she didn't mention it, but I will just say it. I'm overweight and um, that's something. There's a layer of fat there. You have to flip the baby. Um, number two, we know our baby's measuring large. She's big. She's over seven pounds now. If, you know, all those measurements are, at, are estimates, but she's probably over seven pounds. And if we waited till we were going to do the external version, she would be closer to eight pounds. So that's a big baby to be flipping. That's a 20 incher, you know, trying to do this in my stomach. Yeah, she may only be 16, 15 inches when you have her folded up. But if she has one leg down, she's not folded up. Um, another thing, the doctor said she thinks that there's 95% of babies had flipped at, by this point in pregnancy, and she said there's probably a reason she hasn't flipped. Either the cord's in the way, something's in the way, and so she's like, we don't want to force that, um, you know, force her, because that might cause her to go into distress, meaning that the external version wouldn't be as successful anyway, and I might end up having to have an emergency C-section. So, like, one of the things you could do if the baby's measuring too large to turn later is, oh, we'll just do it now. But the problem is if it causes her to go into stress and I need to get an emergency C-section, if I had the baby at 36 weeks, she would definitely probably need to go into the NICU. And definitely, probably. But there's a good likelihood that she would need to go to the NICU for a while. And we'd rather wait until closer to full term so then the event that it did cause an external, uh, any kind of distress and we needed to do an emergency C-section, she was fully ready. But... That being said, we don't know, you know, so she's like, no. And then the other thing we found out is that I have an anterior placenta, which means my placenta is on the front of my stomach. And so in order to push, to move the baby, um, they would have to push on my placenta, which could cause the placenta eruption and um, could like cause the baby to not get blood and oxygen and all that um, through the placenta because it could be torn apart, you know. So lots of reasons why. She's like, normally it has like a 40 to 60% chance of success, but you have a lot of factors against you for the external version. So she's like, I think it's time to discuss the C-section. And I was like, okay. So we talked about that, of course. I'm like, when? Are you sure? Like, what are the chances that she would flip on her own between now and when you would schedule the C-section? And she said, between 36 and 39 weeks, there's probably about a 3% chance that your baby will flip on her own. 3%. <laughs> okay. So the good news is, you know, we scheduled the C-section. I have an appointment May 10th at noon. Like, this baby's coming out. That's good because that's six days earlier than my due date, which means I will be able to hopefully, like, not be in pain as much, you know. Um, I maybe won't gain as much weight. She's still going to be over eight pounds, they estimate. So we're not worried about that. But you know, she might she might need help breathing if she's 39 weeks. We don't know. But anyway, so that's one good thing. Um, also, you get to schedule it. But what we did read was that at 39 weeks in one day, which is the availability they had at the hospital, that's they wouldn't induce me for or have they wouldn't schedule me the C-section before I turned 39 weeks. So that was May 9th. So May 10th was the next available opening for a C-section with the, any of the providers in my practice that I would see. So it was like, okay, May 10th is fine, um, but she'll be 39 weeks in one day. And they're like, the likelihood that you'll go into labor naturally before 39 weeks in one day is like 30% chance. So don't get your heart set basically on that May 10th date because there's a one in three maybe chance that she's going to want to come on her own. I may start having contractions before that May 10th and then I would need an emergency C-section. And I said, well, what if we tried to do a vaginal delivery and then and then couldn't it just turn into an emergency C-section? She's like, you don't want an emergency C-section if you can help it. You get a doctor coming in groggy in his pajamas at 2 in the morning, you know, you don't get to schedule it, and breach is just, it's, it's dangerous. So I'm like, okay, you know, so I'm finally on board with the C-section. I, when she asked me, so should I have my schedulers call you to schedule the C-section? I was like, 
and I just like welled up a little bit like I didn't full-on cry but I definitely was disappointed and I'm like I guess it's time to admit that there's a 3% chance that she's gonna flip and that 97% chance that I'm gonna have to have a c-section <laughs> like okay I get it I, I can take a hint I need to give up on this external version I need to give up on the vaginal delivery and then she said you know the likelihood that you're going to have another c-section for your next child is pretty high too Keep that in mind I'm like okay so um so I'm having a c-section not ideal but it is what it is um so now I want to ask you guys that I scheduled I have my postpartum basket for the house ready I've shown my hospital bag if it isn't up yet it will be up very soon all those considered I did try to like buy things that would work for vaginal or cesarean births but let me know if there's anything not in those bags or in the bag that you think I need to you know like let me know if the recommendations for a vaginal versus cesarean if they've changed and if there's anything I'm missing in the hospital bag or the postpartum basket that I keep at the house let me know because I want to be prepared I am a worry wart for sure I have anxiety about this I just want to be prepared I don't want to be caught off guard when I need something and I don't have it so if you guys watch those videos and you're saying hmm now that I know she's having a c-section I wish if you had had a c-section what would you have bought you know if there's anything that I didn't get please let me know because I don't want to be caught off guard um, the house is ready. We have the pack and play downstairs all folded out, and waterproof pad, um, everything. The diaper station is down there ready. Car, car seat bases are in the car, car seats down there, diaper genies out, ready to go. Got a cabinet for bottles, we got the bottle warmer, steamer, breast pads, everything all is ready to go downstairs. Um, upstairs we have the bassinet, all the stuff for her to sleep next to the bed but now that I know that I'm having a c-section and we have a two-story house and all of the bedrooms in our house are upstairs you don't know how hard it's going to be to do the stairs um, and also how long am I going to be in the hospital when I get home am I going to be okay to go up the stairs our provider told us once a day was okay like if I want to go upstairs to go to bed I can sleep in my bed once a day just go up the stairs it's fine so I'm like okay <laughs> hopefully that is true but I'm sure it's going to be very painful um, but yeah, so now I'm thinking, you know, do I need to change the location of certain things now before she comes? Like, am I going to plan on spending most of my time upstairs or most of my time downstairs? And my husband's going to be off only for a week, but he will be working from home. Um, I'll be off. Here's another perk of having the C-section. Instead of six weeks, I get eight weeks off at full pay. So that is nice. Um, but he'll be home, but for the most part, he'll be working and I'll just be, you know, alone with the baby. So... I'm going to have to figure out how to take care of us and myself and him and and then he'll take care of me by feeding me and running up and down the stairs when needed like to let the dog outside and stuff like that when I'm not able to just get up and let the dog out because obviously it's hot in Arizona it'll be May and June when this is going down it'll be like over 100 degrees every day we're not leaving the door open like you know if she needs to go out she'll let us know but then I'm not going to be the one to do it and yeah I am planning on exclusively breastfeeding so I have a feeling there won't be a lot of long sleeping nights um, in my near future, but that's okay. I have 19 days from the day I'm filming this, probably more like 16 or 14 days by the time you're watching this until the date my C-section is scheduled. Oh my gosh, crazy. Um, today's actually Friday night and we are going for a date night. And uh, I got dressed and I was like, I wasn't going to like do my makeup and everything. It was just my husband and I was like, ah, I'm just going to like have a you know, nice casual night. I worked from home today. And there was no reason for me to get dressed up. You know, it was just the two of us. I'm like, no big deal. Um, but then I was like, we only have two date nights left. And that's if the baby doesn't come early. I was like, nope. So I put on a dress. I put on jewelry. I did my makeup. You know, I got a lot of highlight on my nose. <laughs> but, yeah, I really wanted to make sure that I took advantage of this date night. We're going to have dinner. We're going to go to play some games at this arcade. You know, we may go to the Sephora VIB sale because we'll be at the mall anyway. So, I'm excited about that. Um, I do have the cravings, same thing, sweets and um, my ice and ice water, ice drinks, still the same. Um, I have finally got the Linea Negra, the line up the belly, but it doesn't go up very high. So I guess I didn't notice that I had it because I can't see below my belly button. You know what I mean? Like if that, I'm completely blind. Even above my belly button, that's where I lose visibility. I can't see anything below that. Um, so I didn't notice, but I finally was like looking in the mirror, um, and I, after my bath and I was naked and I was like, oh, 
oh, I think I have the line now. Like, it took me till 36 weeks to find it, guys. It's pretty crazy. But I have the line, like, really low up to almost the belly button, and then it disappears. So above the belly button, there is no line. Interesting. Um, also, my belly button has not officially fully popped, but it is not in any <laughs> anymore. You can see the outline through my clothes. Um, and if I have a picture of it, I'll show it here. But basically, it's just like a half outie, half any. It's interesting. Um, and it's, it shows through the clothes. I think it's kind of cute. I don't know. Um, I wasn't sure it was going to happen since it hadn't happened by 36 weeks. So my next appointment is at 37 weeks. Um, and then that's a basic appointment, like a 10 minutes with the doctor. How are you feeling? Do you have any questions? Take my vitals. Okay, here's your strep results. Okay, bye. <laughs> and then at 38 weeks, I go back. Um, that's like the first week of May. And they are going to do an ultrasound and check the baby's growth and position, position check. If she is still breached, we proceed with the C-section. So I only have two more doctor's appointments in this pregnancy and then C-section. So that's pretty crazy. That is it for my 36-week pregnancy update. Um, with that said, since I will be trying to do a 39-week update, I'm going to have the baby on 39 weeks in one day. So <laughs> I'm going to try to do a 39-week update and get it up by 39 weeks in one day. I'm going to try to take a picture of the day I deliver so that I can use that in my, you know, progression of my belly shot and stuff. So we got a lot to do, but um, I hope you guys have been jo enjoying this series. Let me know if there's anything you want me to pre-plan in the next couple of weeks, pre-film, so that I have content for you while I'm on my mini maternity leave. I do have a few videos pre-filmed, but not very many. So if there's anything you want to see or you think that would make sense for me to film early and then just post whenever in, in May sometime, let me know down below in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.